The New York Times has purchased Wordle for a seven-figure sum, but I was able to download it for free from the App Store. The idiots. They're the latest in a long line of gaming purchases in 2022, and it's starting to feel like everybody wants one. But what does this mean for the free game? And why the New York Times? Because they were not on my bingo card for this acquisition. Well, there are a few options for the future of this game. Option one, data. More often than not, when a free game is purchased by a bigger brand, it's then used to mine data, which it can then sell back to recoup the cost of the initial investment. The New York Times has said the game will remain for free for now. If they go down this route, I hope they take into account that I'm not stupid, it's just Americans don't spell color with a U, so I did guess correctly. There is a ton of data behind each game, working out people's guesses, reading age, intelligence, and more. And I'm sure companies like Grammarly would pay big bucks for this information. They could also put the game behind a paywall, although this seems unlikely, given one of the biggest appeals of it is the ease of play. But hey, weirder things have happened. Option two, adverts. Advertising is all about attention. I don't wanna go all Molly May on you here, but we do all only have 24 hours in a day. Wordle currently has a smooth process to bring back an engaged audience day after day after day, so it's silly to not assume they might put ads around the game to recoup their spend. A much better gaming experience, I'm sure you'll agree. It's also silly not to assume that if they do that, the audience will become much less engaged and go play a clone of the game as they don't want to be bombarded with ads. They just want to struggle to guess a five letter word, like a toddler trying to impress their parents or Elmo in every episode of Sesame Street. Option three, boosting their current offering. Newspapers are a dying medium that are largely failing to convert their readers into paying subscribers, so this could be their M. Night Shyamalan twist to get their audience back on their side. Currently, the New York Times has a gaming app that is completely separate from the newspaper subscription that offers new games every day. So this could be their way of trying to get more subscribers to that platform. More and more companies and creators are trying to convert their fans into subscribers in order to get a consistent income to continue doing what they're doing. From Netflix to OnlyFans to Patreon. Oh, um, mine's linked below. My Patreon, not OnlyFans. Although, if you do donate more than £5 a month, I will show you my asshole. So if this is the newspaper industry's big game plan, I bet the Daily Telegraph are gonna buy Squid Games next. I guess the old saying is correct. Don't hate the player, hate the surveillance capitalism model that purchased the game. Jokes aside, Josh seems to have sold the game at the height of its popularity, and as a result got a massive payday. Kudos, brother. Brother, 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 brother. I'm aware of how destiny is gonna take its course, brother. Thanks so much for watching. What do you think's next for Wordle? I'd love to have a conversation and hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this video next about why cows are being put in VR. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and join my subreddit, Patreon, or Discord. All of those are linked below. Godspeed, I'll see you all next week.